Welcome to ADF TV. My name is Frank Nymphius and I'm from the Oracle JDeveloper and ADF product management team. In this session, I talk about task load templates. Remember a previous session where I talked about the architectural importance that task load have for ADF application development. And there I said that the task load diagram is a very good medium to use as a common language between technical departments and non-technical departments to agree on a specific business process required for an application or organization. Now templates drives this a bit further because templates are not just used for one usage but also for reuse across different bounded task flows and maybe even across applications. A typical candidate for a task flow template would be a CRUD operation. So where you define the logical steps involved in creating create, read, update and delete operations on an entity. Having a template for this will make sure that instead of just the word of mouth communication between developers that all the CRUD operations that you have in your application or across the organization are consistent which means they are intuitive to use for the user. Another use case is a more complex data lookup. Again here you may want to specify a template so that all the lookup processes have identical navigation paths. A task flow template is developed as a bounded task flow. So you have metadata files that you work with and you have the diagrammer to paint the picture that in the end represents the business flow. The difference is that a template is not immediately implemented, though you can implement parts of the template, like an exception handling flow. Typically, they are kind of blueprints or just pre-configured starting points for bounded task flows. You put a template into an ADF library, and that ADF library then will be used to deploy the task flow and reuse the task flow template across applications. If we look into what exactly a template could contain as pre-configured values, then of course all view activities and all non-visual activities that we have available in a bounded task flow are very good candidates to put into a template. In addition to that, properties that determine the behavior of a task flow could also be predefined in a template. If, for instance, you want to use the initializer and the finalizer property to start and end logging or just doing some auditing, or if you want to configure the transaction behavior or if you want to determine the state of the data control, whether it be isolated or shared. Now this all can go into a template. It just depends on what the template is built for. And then the template could become either a blueprint, which means it's getting copied into a bounded task flow project, or referenced as a permanent link. Let's look at one of the use cases, which is copy. Copying a bounded task flow template basically means that you use it as a blueprint. Like a blueprint for a house that you use as a one-to-one -one copy when building the instance of the house, you can apply minor or major changes to it. Now taking the example of the CRUD operation, if the process you're going to build doesn't include a create of the entity but just an update and delete option, then you might want to delete the branch that defines the create operation. When you copy a template, then the template content will be copied into the metadata of the bounded task load that you built. So they're becoming part of it. Now one thing that you need to be aware of is that task load templates and their artifacts have IDs. Now these artifacts are copied with their IDs into the bounded task load that you want to use the template in. You have to make sure that the IDs in a bounded task load configuration file are unique. And the easiest way to do so is to switch to the source view and see if there are red markers indicating a conflict. Though at runtime the conflict wouldn't hurt, it will become a problem if you want to use customization to customize task flows at runtime. Even if customization is not on the radar for your application today, you don't want to lock that option for future use. So it's better to clean up and make sure that you have a unique ID usage within the bounded task flow file. It doesn't need to be unique across the application. The second use case is where you reference the template. Now, when you reference the template, you're not copying the markup of the template into the bounded task flow you built. Instead, at runtime, the artifacts become available 
to the bounded task or referencing the template. This is typically used to create pre-configurations, a predefined behavior for a bounded task load that you want to have for a consistent appearance. For instance, you want to define logging functionality as a task load template that is referenced by other bounded task loads because that would allow you to easily change the behavior of the logging in only changing the template because reference templates have a very direct relation to the bounded task load they're in or vice versa the task load to the template. So a change in the template will have an immediate impact to the bounded task load that is referencing the template. There's one downside with referencing templates which is that they are not showing as visual artifacts within the task load diagram. So if the task load template for instance contains an exception handling routine which I would highly recommend to use a template for then the exception handling routine doesn't show in the diagram. In 12c it will show. It will show us a grayed out area that indicates that there is a visual or non-visual activities added to a bounded task load template. Until then it's not there and you need to be aware of that. So let's have a look at a screenshot for a reference template. This screenshot shows a bounded task flow that is based on the template reference. The diagram doesn't tell you that, but if you look into the property inspector, you can see the task flow reference in a property. You also see input parameters, and those input parameters could either come from the template or they could be defined in the bounded task flow. Any input parameter that you define on the template will become available to the bounded task flow that you build, which means that if the bounded task flow is integrated by a task flow call activity or through a region activity within an application, the developer will be prompted to provide input values. As you know in bounded task flows, input values that are passed to a task flow are saved either in an attribute in a memory scope, which is less recommended, or in a managed bean property which sits in a page flow scope or view scope, mostly in the page flow scope, which is highly recommended because it allows you to discover the individual properties that exist there, plus it allows you to document it and you have a type safe API that you create. This managed bean could be created in the context of the template and then the template with the task flow definition and the managed bean definition, plus the physical Java class representing the instance of the managed bean are deployed to an ADF library from where it can be used in bounded task flows. If you create a bounded task flow based on such a template, then the managed bean becomes available for you to access within your flow, either using expression language or Java. The next slide shows the bounded task flow template definition. And here you see the built environment is exactly the same as the environment that you use for bounded task loads. You also see the property inspector and all the other configuration options that you have for managed bean. So in here a task flow template is nothing different from a bounded task flow that you build from scratch except for that this is a highly reusable approach that allows you to standardize on specific processes and techniques throughout the company. One thing to keep in mind when you build task flow templates is that if you reference a task flow template property that is predefined in the template, then this cannot be overwritten in the bounded task flow. So this is the difference between copying and referencing the template. In conclusion, using templates is a great way to identify pattern and standardize on specific processes that makes it more intuitive and more consistent when users work within an application. You have two options. One is to copy the template, in which case the template becomes a blueprint for an instance of a bounded task flow because it can be modified there. And the other option is to go by reference, in which case the reference properties cannot be overwritten. And instead, if a change in the template occurs, it will also be impacting the bounded task flow that you build. When you build bounded task flows based on template references, make sure that you don't have a conflict with the naming scheme that you provide. The naming must be unique for all the artifacts that a bounded task flow has. And if those content comes from a template, be it referenced or copied into, then you need to make sure just to ensure that in the future you could use customization if customization becomes an important aspect of your application development with ADF, that this door is not locked for you. You can standardize on 
properties, you can standardize on behavior, and you can also predefine managed beam. So templates is a very powerful feature that really brings reuse into Java e application development. <music>